Hi, Marie Claire. I have taken a look at your questions and I provide the following comments. Please note that this is not official comments or legal advice, but it is just an academic discussion of the scenario in the Babes or Dumo and Montpincha case. Firstly, you asked whether video footage is reliable and strong evidence in assault cases. This is not the case as a rule because every case is decided on its own merit and every you know, video or prospective piece of evidence is considered separately to determine its admissibility, reliability and the weight that should be attached to it. For video to be allowed as evidence, it must have been lawfully obtained. That is the general rule. However, our constitution has said that if fairness motivates allowing an illegally obtained video as evidence, then that may be done. A trial within a trial procedure is used by our courts to determine whether evidence is admissible. Now, factors include you know, factors taken into consideration will include whether the version presented to court is original and whether the integrity of the recording is intact. I've looked at the video in the Babes with Dumo case and I must say that it's not very clear. Uh, it's not one of those videos where you can say, well, obviously this is the victim and obviously this is the alleged perpetrator. So if the court does, you know, consider admitting the video, they will probably have to get further testimony on who is in the video and what the surrounding context was. Your second question was whether the world of law and justice has been changed by the increase of videos we've been seeing of um, terrible incidents of violence against especially women and children. The videos do call on our moral sense of justice in a very real and tangible way and the public outcry against crime has become more pronounced thanks to social media. Now, video evidence on social media really makes a difference on the bulk and value in criminal cases. A video can be considered as evidence regardless of whether it has been posted onto social media. So the fact that something is online does not mean that it has a heavier weight attached to it as a piece of evidence. There are many technical requirements that evidence has to meet before it's taken into consideration in court. So people who post um, videos depicting crime on social media should just take note of this. The fact that the video exists online does not mean that it will be taken into account by a court and it does not necessarily mean that it's admissible and relevant and carries a heavy weight. Thirdly, you asked whether the law has caught up with dealing with viral videos online. Firstly, does the law really protect our freedom to communicate online? And secondly, does the law protect the victims of online defamation? Yes, absolutely. We have constitutional freedom of speech and we South Africans are very lucky in, in, in that we can communicate freely. And then secondly, defamation law, our defamation law, applies equally to the online and offline spheres, so there is a legal system that provides relief to those who are defamed online. Fourthly, you asked whether live videos have more credibility than videos that are captured and then uploaded onto the internet. Now, because a live video will most likely be presented in court after the fact, I believe that it will be scrutinized as closely as non-live videos. The same questions will be asked regardless of whether the video is labeled live or not. The copy submitted to court will have to be authenticated. Um, there will have to be an investigation into its quality and integrity and relevance. So depending on the circumstances, a video's life status may be used in argument for its admissibility, but the fact that the video is live won't guarantee that it is admissible or that heavy weight is attached to it. Lastly, you asked why I think the Babes would do more alleged assault video grabbed the public's attention. Obviously, there's the issue that she is a celebrity and she will have a massive social media following. The online world makes it very easy to mass publish and communicate videos and comment on such controversial incidents. Violence against women and the vulnerable has received much needed increased attention. Uh, and a good example is the Me Too movement, where really international society took a stand against these wrongs. And then there's the factor of us just really being sick and tired of violence. And if social media allows us 
the chance to speak out against it, then that is what we'll do.